This is Streptococcus part two. I actually already recorded this one and, and then promptly deleted it by accident from my um, camera, from my phone, and so um, that's why you don't see anything else on the page, but this is actually part two. Okay, so um, in part one, we had talked about the alpha hemolytic most famous streps, and now we're gonna talk about the most famous beta hemolytic streps. So you can use a pink line and draw over to this word beta hemolytic. That word um, hemolytic means to break red blood cells and the beta is um, a symbol to uh, indicate that it's a complete lysis of red blood cells under like, uh, uh, excuse me, unlike the partial um, hemolysis that uh, other streps can do. So first we'll look at um, group A strep sometimes called GAS or GAS and group A strep is what you know of for causing strep throat. It can cause other infections as well. Its name pyogenes literally means pus former and anyone that's had strep throat or seen it knows that you can see the patches of pus, which are like white blood cells and, and dead bacteria um, on the back of the throat, and those are uh, sores are quite painful. And then this is can be diagnosed with a rapid strep test. This is a PCR-based test that can um, just look to see if there are certain DNA sequences found in strep pyogenes, and if they find them, then it's a positive on the test and it's super fast. I actually got strep throat for the first time ever in my life last spring and I looked in the mirror, I saw those white patches, I knew it wasn't just a horrible sore throat anymore and um, went in and I of course I didn't really want to be at the doctors but I knew I, I better get antibiotics and thankfully the rapid strep test was done super fast and I got out of there, got home so that I could go teach again, although they made me stay home um, for 24 hours so that I wouldn't get my students sick. Okay, so anyway, on to what it can cause. Uh, strep, um, strep pyogenes, if it's in the mouth or um, in the pharynx, might be a better way to put it, so the very back of the throat, uh, that can cause what would be called strep throat or pharyngitis would be the more proper name. And then um, it also can cause ear infections. I don't know if this is super common, but um, it's definitely not uh, um, uncommon. And then uh, on the skin, it can cause uh, impetigo, which is a skin rash that can cause uh, sloughing and death of the skin. And if it gets deep into the skin, where it's getting down into the connective tissues, now it can cause um, necrotizing fasciitis. This is um, what some people call the flesh-eating disease. And um, also, if it's systemic, some of the toxins can cause scarlet fever. So a variety of uh, diseases that can be caused by Streptococcus pyogenes, and this is not even all of them. What really makes it famous, in my opinion, is the rare set of complications that can occur if you get a Streptococcus pyogenes infection and then fight it off with your immune system and make antibodies what can sometimes happen is about two to three weeks later after someone thinks, oh, I'm better, I beat the strep throat and I never had to take antibiotics, they might develop some interesting symptoms like joint problems, uh, heart problems, specifically their heart valves, and um, sometimes kidney problems. And these symptoms, um, sometimes it's only one of them, sometimes it's all three, are referred to as rheumatic fever. It's a very old name for this problem because what was most apparent, you know, a hundred years ago would have been the joint pain. A rheuma, so rheuma means joint, and 
don't rheumatic factor, rheumatic fever, sorry. And this is um, autoimmune. Because the antibodies that the body made to Streptococcus pyogenes also match joints, heart valves, or parts of the kidneys. So it may or may not happen depending on the type of antibody that the person makes and also depending on the strain of the Streptococcus. Some are more likely. Uh, so it's caused So by definition, autoimmune, autoimmunity is when your own antibodies attack host tissues. In this case, the antibodies did have one important purpose of taking out strep pyogenes, but they have basically it's like collateral damage. Now the joints, heart valves, and kidneys may also be damaged as well. And then uh, I had a student, a couple students actually tell me that um, when they got streptococcus pyogenes, a complication they later got was psoriasis. So um, we could also put that on here. Psoriasis is sometimes a complication of an autoimmune reaction after a strep infection. Okay, now let's look at group B strep. I'm going to use an orange highlighter for this one. This uh, is the type of strep that's tested when a woman is um, pregnant. They test her for group B strep. So it's tested in pregnancy. They just do a culture for that rather than a, um, a rapid strep test. And uh, what's interesting about this is Streptococcus agalactiae uh, may be normal flora in the mother Not only may it no be normal flora in her vagina, it might actually be helping to prevent her from getting yeast infections, for example. So not only might she be asymptomatic, but strep A. galactiae is beneficial for her. Um, however, because of its beta hemolytic properties and the fact that newborns lack alveolar macrophages, as the baby comes through the birth canal, it can pick up strep A. galactiae and possibly get pneumonia. It's a rare complication, but it is a small risk. And then you say, oh, but I had a C-section. I would hypothesize that that means that there wouldn't be the same risk because the baby picks up the strep A galacticate as it comes through the birth canal. So a C-section would avoid that. So the newborns may pick it up and develop um, pneumonia and possibly uh, meningitis, which I guess is even less rare, or what did I say, less common. <laughs> And a reminder of why newborns are so particularly susceptible is that they lack alveolar macrophages in their lungs, so they're more susceptible to pneumonia. And of course their whole body is lacking in a normal flora when they're first born. They have to pick that up from the birth canal and then from their immediate environment to help protect from pathogens in the environment. So because of this, some women um, will take antibiotics during delivery to try and kill off all the strep A galactiae bef before the baby passes through the canal. And this may be, you know, something that could potentially protect the baby from getting uh, strep A galactiae um, pneumonia or meningitis. However, it would not be responsible to just wipe out all of the bacteria in the vagina without, and elsewhere in the body too for this woman, without considering that after the delivery, both the mother and the baby 
need to be cared for in a way that helps them to build up their normal flora again, which would help the baby and the mother fight disease in the postpartum period. Okay, wow, I think I got done with that one. I wanted to say one more thing then since I um, went faster than I thought. Um, what it was was certain strains of Streptococcus pyogenes are more likely to cause the complication of um, rheumatic fever. And a certain strain of Streptococcus pyogenes is more likely to cause um, psoriasis. You guys might not have as much room as me because you've already filled this in, but if you could fit this somewhere, certain strains are notable for this complication. Okay, I'll see you in part three, which I'm already done with.